All right, just real quick. I've never done this before. I got so carried away into my show that I forgot to give a shout out to a company that I said I was going to give a shout out. So I'm going to be throwing this at the very beginning of the show, and then it's going to be like the show is going to start all over again. But I want to keep my word and be truthful and faithful to this brother, Nate. He has a company called Testa Beat Drums. Find him on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and LinkedIn, Testa Beat Drums. Or you can go onto his website, contact him, testabeatdrums.com. I'll put his link in the show notes. And what he does for you musicians or for you pastors, I know there's pastors that listen here, he does maintenance for your drums, and he makes your drums last longer and sound better. Now, I know that... A lot of you have been to churches where the sound is terrible, the drums are just off, there's just a tons of um, poor <laughs> music that comes out of some of these small churches. And a lot of the reason is, is they just don't have the skill. And a lot of times is you try to save money. And what I like about this business, Testa Beat Drums, is Nate will come in and maintain your drums to make them last longer which means that you are actually saving money. If you have him come in and maintain your drums, he not only will make sure that your drums are set up in the optimum way to get the best sound, but he will also make them last longer. So you're gonna be saving money by using this product. That's important. You want to find products like that where you can save money in the long run, long run and this is, this is it for you. So go check him out, support this Christian brother. He's in Florida, but he can work out with you a plan to travel if it if it's justifiable. I don't know, you can talk to him about that, but please go give him a follow too. Can you just support him on the social media sites even if you're not a musician? Just give him a follow, that really helps us businesses grow. You can do that, again, it's at, at Testa Beat Drums. And if you are personally need maintenance on your drums or a church organization or a studio, Give him a call. You want to have good sounding drums. You want to get your money's worth. You want to make excellent music. You want to have th the highest quality for people. And you also want to save money. So go check out Nate's company, Testa Beat Drums, T-E-S-T-A Beat Drums. It'll be in the show notes. Help support a brother. Give him a follow. That really matters. And use him for all of your drum maintenance a really great guy. He's been a great loyal listener. Thank you for your listening, Nate, and enjoy the show. So let me tell you a little bit how my day started today. I started scrubbing the heating coils for my dishwasher because a plastic spoon fell from the top to the bottom and melted onto it. You open it up and it just smells like the most disgusting plastic in the world. And I didn't even work. I couldn't even get all of the plastic off. It smells terrible. I'm probably going to die of lung cancer because <laughs> of those smelling toxic fumes that I was breathing in. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Oh, there's my favorite saying again. Welcome to How to Build a Ten. <laughs> my name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show. I really appreciate it. We are part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Go over to fightlaughfeast.com. Put in HTBT in the memo field. You'll get a mug, you'll get a pint glass, you'll get a HTBT mug, and you'll get a Fight, Laugh, Feast pint glass, and you'll get tons of great content, and you'll be supporting all of us as we proclaim the Lordship of Jesus in every area of life. Being able to be part of what the Lord's doing is a total blessing financially, in, with your time, with, any, with your prayers, we really need those, because let me tell you, when you're on the front lines, the spiritual battles happen, and you don't always see it in the front end, but you also... Uh, could probably guess that, you know, when you start doing things for the gospel, when you start doing things for Jesus, as you guys know, too, you experience spiritual warfare, too. It's not exclusive to the podcasters. Um, we really appreciate your support and coming together. That's how we become the most effective church possible is when we come together and we husband our resources, we husband our spiritual gifts, and we make a united front. So that's one of the things that we try to do with this network, and I am so grateful to be part of it. It is a wonderful thing to be doing what you love. And I know that that is not always possible all the time. There's many jobs that I've had. There's many projects I've worked on that I've hated. They're like four-letter words, and a lot of times they're four-letter abbreviations. 
And there's jobs that I've just hated. I mean, I was a service porter. My very first job out of high school was a service porter. Well, no, that's not true. My very first job was working for my father for free from 13 years of age to I graduated. He made me work summers with him. And if I wasn't doing sports, if I wasn't in school, I was working, which I hated him for it at the time. But now I'm so appreciative that I actually have this work ethic because I'm doing like six jobs now. But I was a service porter. I hated that. You had gotten hot cars in the summer. It was terrible. California heat. Oh, bad. But when you can get to a point where you're truly doing what you love, and I'm so thankful for this. It's like I enjoy. Sorry, that was a little loud. I enjoy coming here, talking to you guys, working through different issues to help make you successful, to help bless you guys, to help talk about what matters, to be part of the strategy of winning this battle for Christ. It's such an honor. And we get to do it because of the free gifts that God has given us, the gifts that he's given me that I don't deserve. It's grace. It's unmerited favor and mercy that I, it's, I'm not getting the punishments that I definitely deserve. And we get to talk about great things. I just am so thankful, and I would just encourage you guys to find out what you love, to find your passions, and do your best to get into it. Because I really think that God wants us to be doing what we enjoy. Not that it always happens, not that it will always be guaranteed that you will get to that path, but we should work hard to do it. In this imperfect world, in this short time that we're here, I think God has blessed us with the gift to be able to enjoy work, even though it's part of a curse. I think we are meant to enjoy life and it's just so much sweeter and you excel and also thinking about that, not just for yourself, but for your employees, anyone who works for you is do your best to be able to get them to do things that they enjoy because that's when you're going to get the most out of them. That's when you're going to excel. That's when your culture is going to thrive because people are going to be happier. People are going to be joyful. People are going to want to put in their time because of that. I want to do a, something I don't normally do, and I talk about my son, but I'm not doing it because I think he's special or I think he's like super intelligent, but I want to do this because it was a rhyme reminder for me, and I want to share it with you to help encourage you guys as well. And this is something that I've noticed about my son. It's more of a characteristic. It's not like, again, I'm not trying to brag about him. I hate people that brag about their kids. I don't hate them. I hate that they do it. Because you're basically trying to say, my kid's better than yours. And I don't want to do that at all. But one of the things that my son does is he is really focused. I know, again, I don't know if he's more focused than other kids or whatever, but I just, just about him. Really focused, really determined. He wants to figure things out. And he will spend, for, a, you know, he's under two years old. He will spend five minutes, literally five minutes on something, trying to figure out how it fits and correlates with something else. Like he'll take my headphones for my podcast and my recorder and he'll sit there with the 3.5, 3.5 or three millimeter. I forget which one you audio guys, forgive me. He'll try to get the headphone jack into the female piece of my recorder and he'll try to sit and, you know, cause you're under two, you're not that coordinated, but he'll sit there and just try it over and over again. And then he finally figured out how to use two hands to steady himself, to put it in. And he's so determined, he's so focused, he's so curious, he wants to figure things out, and he will not stop until he can try. And what's so cute is one of the one of the switches I have for my lights for the podcast, because now I'm doing video with uh, the book club, and also with Reform Jellicle with AD Robles, which if you haven't checked out, please do. And the light is a switch, but it's a switch where you like push up or push down. I don't know if I explained that right, but... He, he can't do it, but he'll grab my finger to me, for me to do it for him. And he'll, he'll hold my finger and have me push it on and then push it off. And he'll watch the light turn on and off with the switch. He knows he can't do it, so he'll enlist his father. And this is what it reminds me of, is, or encouraged me with, I should say, that at that age, you're learning so fast. Like the first couple of years of your life, you're learning more than you'll ever learn at a rate that you... That's faster than you'll ever learn in your life. But we should have that determination. We should have that curiosity that my son has in every area of our lives today. We should be doing it at work, at our homes, with other people, with our wives, husbands. We should be curious. We should be intrigued. We should be pursuing how we can love our wives better. 
We should be pursuing ways to do our jobs in a more excellent way. We should look for ways to develop our products into new ways and how they fit and how they can work in markets. And we should have a pursuit and we should have a determination, just like my son, that he is going to figure it out. You are going to excel at that company you started. You are going to learn how to invest. You are going to get yourself out of debt. You are going to get a promotion. And not that I'm just having this health and wealth gospel that I, if I believe it strong enough, it's going to happen. But you're going to figure out how to gain the skills. You're going to figure out how to train yourself to get to that point. And you're not going to stop. How dangerous would we be as a church? How dangerous would we be as a group of people? How effective would we be if we had that relentless determination? Determination, relentlessness. We live in a beautiful era where if we are determined enough that something good can come of it. If we are bent on learning on improving and tweaking and revolutionizing ourselves and making adjustments. If we can do that, we live in the most beautiful era in the world where it's almost certain that there is going to be good that comes out of it from a financial standpoint, from a successful standpoint, from a career standpoint is what I'm talking about. We know spiritually God says all things are working out for good and his plan is going to be accomplished. But what I'm talking about is with the infrastructure that we have in the United States, for those of you listening in the United States, for the the capital that has been created, for the economies, for the digitization of this new era that we're coming into, if we have the determination to learn, to improve, to build on ourselves, success is going to happen. It might not happen right away. You might have failures along the way, but if you take those failures and use them to guide you to what you should be doing, to be learning, to be improving, to figuring just how that headphone jack fits into the recorder, just a little better, just a little more fit, you're going to be successful. You are going to be improved. You may make mistakes along the way, but that is not the end. It is just the means to get you to where you need to go. Last thing I want to talk about real quick before I end, and this I guess is kind of related, but not really. It's like, we just need to be okay with making mistakes. We need to be okay that we are going to step out. We're going to make a decision. It could be wrong. One of the lessons that I learned in business school that have stuck out to me one the most is that no decision is worse than a bad decision. Or you can say it in the positive way, a bad decision is better than no decision at all. And we should remember that. We should be okay. We should have the humility to make mistakes. We should have the confidence in Christ to take care of us that we can make bad decisions. Because in the end, it's not our good decisions. It's not our ingenuity. It's not our entrepreneurial skills that is going to provide for us and our family. It's God alone. If we are looking to ourselves in our skills and our entrepreneurship and our right decisions and our smart strategic financial plays, if we're looking for those things to support us, it's just idolatry. But God alone is the one who supports us, provides for us, good or bad decisions. When we are faithful in him, we're, we can have confidence in that. We can, we can have boldness in that. The Christian body, the Christian organization, us as Christians, the church, should be the most bold entrepreneurs in the world because we know that we're not taking risks where we are going to be abandoned, but we have a creator who's always going to be looking out for us. And as long as we are obedient and loving God, we can do whatever we want. It's a loose John MacArthur quote. Love God and do whatever you want. In a lot of ways, that's true. If you are being faithful to what God's called you to do, and you have these desires to step out, then step out. Because it's not you making a good decision that's providing for you. It's God providing for you. And even if you make a bad decision, God is going to be there to catch you and to uphold you and provide for you. I've made tons of mistakes in my life. I've made tons of bad decisions in my life. And God has always provided for me and my family. Never once has he failed. Great is his faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. 
All that I have needed, he has provided. Great is his faithfulness. Now let's go out, be successful, step out in faith, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless.